We just started a new month and you know what that means. It's time to share my September sewing plans. This month, it's all about jackets. Stay tuned to see my pattern and fabric choices and hear how I plan to sew three jackets in three weeks. Be sure to keep watching until the end for an exciting announcement. Hey, Sew Sewers, I'm Tony, and this is Sew Sew Lounge. If you're new here, welcome. And if we've hung out before, I'm so glad that you're back. I don't know how you feel about sleeves, but I've spent a very long amount of time completely avoiding them. It all started back in college when I turned in the very first sleeve that I ever sewed and got back a grade of a C. At that point, I decided that sleeves were hard and I didn't want to sew them anymore. So I didn't. And when I had to design things, I made everything sleeveless because, hey, I was living in Texas and it's hot and people don't need sleeves, right? On the rare occasion that I did need a sleeve for a garment, I made a kimono sleeve because then it's just one big pattern piece and you cut it all out and you're done. You don't have to worry about gathering and fitting it in and all of that nonsense. Fast forward to this year and I've actually started sewing some set in sleeves. Now for comparison, a kimono sleeve is just a big rectangle and you just stitch it underneath, stitch it on the shoulder, you're done. Raglan sleeves are the ones that come into the neckline at a V. They're also a lot easier to sew because you have a lot less gathering to do because you're actually going through a wider, more curved part of your body. Set in sleeve is the one where you have to go right along your shoulder line and you're taking this flat, slightly curved pattern piece and having to completely curve it to go around your shoulder so you can actually move your arms. I didn't want any part of that for many, many years. But now that I've started trying it, I'm actually not too bad at it. So I think to date I've put in about six or eight sleeves and they turned out decently. And what it told me was that if I'd only been trying to sew sleeves since college, all these years later, I would be really awesome at sewing sleeves because now that I've done it about six times, I'm okay. And I could have been using all these years gone by to get better at it, as opposed to living in fear. What are you in fear of sewing that is limiting your abilities? Leave it in the comments below, because today is the day we say no more fear of sewing sleeves. And I declare that September is sleeve month. The first pattern I am going to show you today, and this is not in any particular order because I haven't decided which way I'm going to do this yet, but I'm going to get everything cut and ready to go and then we'll start the sewing process. First pattern is McCall's 5668. This is a uh, 2008 copyright and I don't believe it's in print anymore. I have not been able to find it, but maybe you'll have some luck on uh, the internet somewhere. Now, this pattern is a Nancy Zeman pattern. And if you've never heard about sewing with Nancy, Nancy started her career on PBS in the early 80s. And she taught sewing in a very easy, low key, approachable kind of style. And she was on the air until 2015. At that point, she decided to retire. And unfortunately, we lost Nancy to cancer in 2017. But her books are still available. You may still be able to find some of her patterns. And she developed a system which she put into the McCall's patterns called the 10, 20, 30 minutes to sew. And it's basically similar to my concept of using blocks of time to do certain tasks. And on her patterns, she says like, this is a 10 minute little project. So this is something you can do in 10 minutes and they have 20 minutes and they have 30 minutes. And before you know it, your make is finished. So this is a very classic jacket. And I just wanted something that was going to be easy and relatively fast to sew because I am doing this all in three weeks and three jackets in three weeks is going to be a challenge. So part of my criteria for being able to get all this sewing done was easy patterns that didn't have a lot of 
buttonholes or lining or complicated three-piece collars or any of those kind of things. So this one is very easy. It is a very classic jacket. It is just below the hips, three-quarter length sleeves, and there are no buttons. There are no buttonholes. And the collar is super easy. It is just a self-faced collar. So we're gonna make a facing and then it's just gonna kind of fold to the outside and it's gonna be easy. There is a lining in the sleeves, which I think is the way that we're finishing the bottom of the sleeves is that's why we need that lining. But other than that, it is not super complicated. So one thing to note, if you can get your hands on one of Nancy's patterns, is that the insides are filled with all kinds of good information. So not only does she have very detailed pattern instructions, which does not seem to be the case with most commercial patterns these days, but she has all kinds of helpful tips. And some of these include like how to save time, cutting shortcuts, how to properly attach interfacing and doing a test on a scrap, which just blew my mind because I've never thought of doing that. And then there's a very interesting chart over here about all the different types of Pellon fusible interfacing that you can buy and the different um, types of fabric you would want to use to get the right kind of interfacing. So I did actually use that when I went shopping and it was very, very helpful. So you may be wondering, okay, great, Tony, nice pattern, but what are you gonna do with it? So last year, I was at a quilt shop in LaGrange called The Quilted Skein, which is a delightful shop. It is gorgeous. If you are in Central Texas, go to LaGrange, go to The Quilted Skein, you will love it. And they have mostly quilting fabric, which is fine because I'm all about using brightly colored fabrics and I don't care what it is as long as it's something I like. They had the Tula Pink curiouser and curiouser collection in its entirety and I might have gone a little bit crazy. So it is an Alice in Wonderland themed collection um, and if you're not familiar with Tula Pink she's a fabric designer. She primarily designs um, just basic cottons. They're really beautiful and very very graphic and I absolutely fell in love with this. Obviously this is a queen of hearts and I thought let's do something a little bit different. Let's get some roses from her rose garden and put them together in the same jacket. And because two fabrics isn't quite enough, I got this sweet black and white stripe to add a little pop from her dress. And we're gonna see how we can make this happen in this pattern. Now you might think I'm crazy and it's totally possible, but I do love color and print and the black and white stripe would just be for the accent part of the collar, so it's not gonna be a major component of the jacket, but I will be making a video later this month to show you how to cut out your fabric, to use multiple fabrics, to create a super unique design and a very classic silhouette. You may be wondering, why three jackets in three weeks? What's the urgency? Well, I'm going to a conference the last week of September, and I wanted to make some jackets to stand out in a crowd and to use as conversation starters. How many times have you walked up to a total stranger and said, I love your outfit? Or maybe that's a really great top. Let me know in the comments below. And when you think about it, it's a really easy way to get somebody to come up and start talking to you. The next jacket pattern I'm using is Simplicity 8418. It is just a classic letterman's jacket. The big difference between the letterman's jacket that most of us are familiar with is that this one has a 22 inch separating zipper. So I've never sewn one of these before. We'll be doing that together a little bit later this month. One of the reasons I chose this pattern is because of the zipper, no buttonholes, and also because it uses ribbed knit banding for the collar cuffs and the bottom of the jacket. So being able to just buy that and sew it on is great. And unfortunately, I could not find any locally here in Houston. I had to get online and I found some at Pacific Trimmings, which is one of the stores I went to in New York. But because I didn't put it on my list, I didn't look for it and I had to order it. So it is on its way. I did realize that I needed that yesterday and fingers crossed it will be here before the end of the month. Now the added bonus of 
the way that the jacket's put together is that that banding is the last thing that's added. So I don't really have to stress about it. I can get the whole jacket together. A couple of other things to point out. The jacket is fully lined, but the lining is exactly the same as the outside shell of the jacket. So you're just making it in reverse and then you just kind of stick it inside and pull it through the sleeve to flip everything. So that's gonna be pretty easy. And then last but not least, it has raglan sleeves. So I will only be doing set in sleeves on two of these three jackets, which will make my life a little bit easier and help speed up the process. The fabric I'm going to use for this is this kind of slightly heavyweight, it's not heavyweight, it's medium to heavyweight um, canvas. I got this from my friend Heather. She actually used this to um, cover her ironing board. And I think she made some bags out of it. She was um, de-stashifying and I won out on this. So I'm really excited because it totally goes with my whole sewing theme that I wanted to project at the conference. And it's, it's just gonna be really bright and colorful and it's gonna stand out. So I'm excited about that. And um, this is, I think it's a canvas, just so you know, kind of like a, a lightweight canvas is what I'd categorize it. But as far as fabric weight goes, I would say it's medium to heavy. So that is jacket number two. Jacket number three is Simplicity 8697. It is a slightly oversized retro 80s kind of jacket. Um, for those of you who are old enough to remember the 80s, you will be familiar with this style of jacket. It's not quite as boxy and it doesn't have any shoulder pads in it added bonus. So this one met the criteria. It has one button, one buttonhole, which is awesome. There's some patch pockets on the front, which I'm really good at. So add a bonus there. And um, there are not a lot of design lines. In the first pattern with McCall's, there are princess seams. So the seam actually comes down the front of the, the uh, jacket. With this, it's very boxy. So it's just like kind of just hangs like a rectangle, which is what I needed for the fabric I'm using. So I love this fabric. I bought this a few years ago. It's called Sewing Woes and it is a really funny comic book style print from Alexander Henry. It looks a lot like my curtains. My curtains, as I would say, is like the 40s version of um, home sewing. And then this is modern sewing woes. And it just reminds me of everything my friends and I used to say when we were learning to sew in college. And it's just really funny. So like this one is sob. How was I supposed to know it was cut on the bias? And then there's another one down here and she's like sold out. All I needed was another yard. I love this fabric. I've been waiting to do something with it. I actually bought um, three and a half yards of it just because that's how much you needed to buy to get the discount. Um, and I didn't know what to do. And so the reason why the boxy design of this pattern is going to work is because I will have to do minimal cutting on my fabric and you'll actually be able to read everything really well because of the design of the pattern. So I don't know if you've heard me mention this before, but my grandma is great at putting in sleeves. And truth be told, that's probably one of the reasons why I've never really made the effort to do it myself, because whenever I've had a problem, I could always call her and she would help me put in a beautiful sleeve. Now I'm super excited to announce that because September is sleeve month and I'm going to be making two jackets with set in sleeves, my grandma has agreed to appear in a video and she is going to show us all how to properly mark, gather, and set in a sleeve so it's perfect and there's no puckering along that seam line. And I'm super excited. That's gonna be coming up a little bit later this month. The great thing about choosing patterns that are basic classic silhouettes is that you know they'll always be in style. Now, maybe the fabric choices will come and go and maybe one day I'll regret making this classic jacket in this wild Alice in Wonderland fabric, but I doubt it. But the good thing is, is that with a classic silhouette, you can wear it 
pretty much all the time. It's going to be one of those pieces that it's worth investing your time in because it's not going to be trendy. It's not going to look weird in a couple of years. And it's going to be one of those closet staples that you'll always have on hand. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to click like and subscribe to my channel so you never miss a stitch. Until we meet again, happy sewing! Don't go! There's another great video coming up next. You're definitely going to want to watch this one.